Hi friends, welcome to Annie Grace Answers. I'm Annie Grace, author of This Naked Mind, and I am answering questions about anything related to living an alcohol-free life, the book, whatever. And you can get the first four chapters of my book free at thisnakedmind.com. Check it out, see what it's all about. Um, we got stuck in a snowstorm yesterday, got home today, so we're home, thank goodness. And yesterday I answered a question, how do you deal with stress without drinking? And it's a really good question because at the end of the day, obviously you want to crack one open, have a beer, and what do you do instead? Um, I answered it yesterday in a way that was really about the fact that the stress in your life actually reduces without drinking and you don't have as much stress and, and alcohol creates stress, etc. But I had a follow-up question saying, okay, but that minute, you know, that end of the day when you're trying to transition, like I get it that stress will reduce overall, etc. And if you're more curious about that, watch part one. But the follow-up question is, okay, but what do you actually do? Like what do you do at the end of the day to kind of relieve stress? And so this is much more specific and I was you know, wanting to answer in the bigger, broader way first, because I really do believe that there are, you know, if you're not going to use something for self-medication, which is actually taking something that's going to psychoactively change your brain um, to instantly remove the stress, the things that you can do are few and far between uh, that are as effective. But for me, what I've started to do doing really regularly since I stopped drinking is it's going to be all the usual suspects. So exercise, my brother um, is a black belt in Taekwondo and his niece just got her black belt, my niece, his daughter. So my husband and I and our two kids joined a gym and now we are going through doing Taekwondo and that's been a huge stress reliever. Um, really enjoy coffee and tea and the great thing about tea specifically is you can kind of make it an entire, you know, experience with getting specific teas and oolongs and a teapot and buying the blossoms and everything else so it can be really akin to you know kind of some of the fluff and um, pomp you got around wine drinking which I think can be really useful if you like that preparation and excitement around it so tea is really helpful um, I love sitting in, I don't do baths, but this I'm sitting on is our hot tub, so I'm very lucky to have a hot tub, and that's really good. And then that brings me to the most effective thing I do to relieve stress, and it's funny because I grew up in a very hippie household in the middle of the mountains, and there was lots of meditation and lots of incense and those sorts of things, and so for some reason, and I think this is how it is when you grow up, you kind of rebel against whatever your parents did for a while. Um, and I just thought meditation was a bunch of hoopla. And how I understood meditation was that you had to clear your mind and you had to stop thinking. And I mean, someone told me once, Annie, if you learn how to meditate, give me a call because that will be the day. And you know, I, it's true. I mean, my mind, the, one of the main reasons I think I drank was to just slow my mind and to stop thinking as much as I was thinking. And, um, and so trying to meditate and stop thinking just had me feeling like a failure. And I hated it, like absolutely hated it. I thought it was the worst. And in fact, I don't even really like the word meditation because I think it's kind of loaded. But the one thing that I have figured that has really worked for me, and I have to give a shout out to Dan Harris, author of 10% Happier, is because he reframed meditation completely. So it wasn't about um, stopping your mind from thinking, it was about observing your thoughts. And I mean, this is going to sound like, oh, duh, to anybody who's practiced mindfulness. But for me, that was a big aha, a big difference. It wasn't about that I had to stop thinking. It was about allowing my thoughts to come in and just being like, oh, that's interesting. Interesting that I'm thinking that and being aware of what I was thinking. And so he said, it's not that you're trying to reach somewhere where you're not thinking, it's that you're actually doing brain exercise by paying attention. And you can do it in lots of different ways. So one of the things I'll do is I'll sit in the hot tub and I'll look at the sky and I'll just focus on watching clouds and seeing what they do. And you know, just try to give myself 10 full minutes of watching clouds. Um, there's another tactic that Robin Sharma talks about, about watching a rose and just looking at a rose for five or 10 minutes. And it sounds like really boring, simple stuff, but the incredible thing about these things, and I did the research on this, is that in addiction, your prefrontal cortex is damaged. So your ability, not only your ability to make decisions, 
in the short term, like when you have two beers, your prefrontal cortex is impaired, not damaged, but impaired. And it's really hard for you to make that decision about a third beer with all of your brain because your brain is impaired. But over time, drinking actually damages your prefrontal cortex. So your prefrontal cortex and your ability to make good decisions, it doesn't work as well as it did before. Um, the beauty about this focusing and mind exercise, we'll call it meditation because that's the word for it, but really exercising your mind and being able to focus on the clouds when your mind drifts, come back to focusing on the clouds, focus on your breathing when your mind drifts, just come back to it and be really forgiving with yourself and just allow yourself to come back to it. This actually in MRI studies builds your prefrontal cortex. So the exact part of your brain that you've damaged through drinking gets built back up through this mindfulness practice. And it can be literally, I started with five minutes a day. Now I do 10 minutes a day. It's nothing. I mean, it's really no time at all. It goes really fast. And um, when I don't do it, like I didn't do it the last few days because we were traveling and, you know, all of us in a hotel room just wasn't really time. I notice myself being more stressed when I don't do it. I did it this morning. I notice myself being more relaxed. So the very tangible answer, what do I do to relieve stress? Um, the hot tub, <laughs> watching the clouds, tea, knowing that meditation is not about stopping thinking, but it's just about being aware of my thinking and closing, you know, coming back to my breath. And I definitely highly recommend 10% Happier by Dan Harris if you're interested in it. And knowing that I'm actually undoing the damage that addiction did when I do that meditation. So those are the really practical things I do. And of course, exercise to relieve stress. Um, but again, watch part one because I think part one has the more meaty answer. But this was a follow-up question, so I really wanted to answer it. And have a wonderful day. Again, you can download the first chapters of my book at thisnakedmind.com. I apologize that it's so bright out here. And we'll talk soon. Have a good one.